Chapter 61. Hashtag hashtag previously hashtag hashtag. Shit, Tobarama said, jumping to his feet instinctively. He looks familiar, now muttered. Who is that? Tsunade asked towards Tobarama and Hashirama. Judging from their expressions, they knew very well who laid on the ground, breathing evenly. Groan. The person on the ground groaned just before opening his eyes and almost immediately, a familiar red color swarmed his eyes. Uchiha, Izuna. Hashtag hashtag now hashtag hashtag. Where am I? Izuna wondered. He remembered dying. Correction, he remembered he was going to die. He knew that once he fell asleep he wouldn't awake again. And yet, he felt awake. He could hear a multitude of people around him. Talking. Rather loudly he might add. Shit, Izuna heard a shout and he felt he knew that voice. He was familiar with another one. His body felt weird, it was like every sense was different from what he remembered, but in a good way. He no longer had that constant little pain in his hands from the multiple fractures he had during his life. Who is that? A female voice this time. Unknown to him as well. Izuna thought he had observed long enough and decided to open his eyes. He involuntarily let out a groan as he tried to at least sit up. He opened his eyes, squinting at the brightness of the room. His eyes hurt slightly, as if they had never experienced light at all. Due to the pain in his eyes, he instinctively activated his Sharingan. Izuna opened his blood-red eyes and the first thing he saw was a lot of people in front of him. He quickly skimmed over the faces, all of them strangers to him. Until his eyes latched on a very specific person who had white, spiky hair and three red markings on his face. Bah, Tobarama said, curling his lips in distaste. Tobarama, Izuna shouted, startling everybody and jumping to his feet. His right hand instinctively went to a single tiger hand seal. Katan, Jirohich, Izuna gurgled, beginning a fire technique only for Naruto to blitz towards him. Naruto grabbed Izuna by the neck and slammed him on the ground. Traitor, Izuna roared, looking at the blazing Sharingan eyes of the man restraining him. Let me go or you will die, screaming alongside him. Naruto however, simply disregarded his shouts and unleashed a small pulse of lighting chakra, enough to disrupt Izuna's own network. Nnai-san, brother, Izuna croaked in thought, blacking out. His last images were that of a man with a Sharingan that strongly resembled his older brother. What is wrong with you? Tobarama snapped at Naruto. You just don't bring an Uchiha back to life like that and don't expect reprisals. He only attacked because he saw you, Naruto countered, picking Izuna and wrapping his arms and legs together. I guess you two have a history, Naruto said. You could say that. He was my Madara, Tobarama explained, putting things into perspective. I killed him though, Tobarama said and everyone's sweat dropped. I have to agree with Tobarama, Naruto Kuen. Bringing back a Kage level shinobi without preparing for it was rather, reckless, Hinata stated. Naruto just shrugged his shoulders as he finished tying Izuna. Why did you bring him back in the first place? Hashirama asked. Answers, Naruto replied. I want to know what happened to his eyes and how they turned into a Rinnegan. Well, now began. We know that Madara stole his eyes and dash. That's a lie, Izuna snarled, awake once again. Everyone turned towards the tied Uchiha. That is a lie. I was dying so I gave him my eyes voluntarily. He was my brother, we would never harm one another. Izuna said, spatting his answer at the female Uchiha. Well, that answers that, Itachi said thoughtfully. Is that true? Naruto asked and Izuna nodded firmly. Interesting, Naruto muttered, bringing his hand to his chin. Why did you give him the eyes in the first place? We come from the pure blood line. We don't get blind from using the Manjikyu, Naruto asked. Pure blood? Blind? What are you talking about? Izuna asked, annoyed by such senseless words. Never mind all of that. Why did you give him your eyes? Naruto asked and Izuna raised an eyebrow. And why should I tell you anything? Izuna asked with amusement. I'm all tied up. You didn't even offer refreshments to your cooperating prisoner, Izuna chuckled while Naruto didn't seem too happy. Answer me one question and I shall answer yours in reply, Izuna offered with a grin. Fine, Naruto sighed. Who are you? Izuna asked the blonde. Was the blonde related to his brother? They certainly looked alike aside from the blonde hair and strange whisker marks. Senja Naruto, Naruto answered, making Izuna narrow his eyes. You have the Sharingan like me. Why are you called Senju? 
Izuna asked sharply. My father was an Uchiha and my mother a Senju. I had to pick one inch Naruto said shrugging his shoulders. You lie, Izuna said with a harsh tone. The Uchiha and Senju clans have been adversaries since the dawn of time. Neither member of the clans would mingle with each other. Not in these times of war, Izuna finished. Told you, Tobarama said. Bringing someone who died so long ago was rushed. Died? Izuna wondered softly. I remember dying. How is it I am here? Izuna asked with confusion. I brought you back, Naruto answered truthfully. No one can bring back the dead, Izuna countered. The shinobi world has changed a lot. You have been dead for a long time, great uncle, Naruto said, making Izuna's eyes widen in surprise. Only Madara was left alive. So that means that you are his grandson. Prove it. Izuna challenged. Izuna narrowed his eyes when he noticed Naruto's Sharingan morph into a Menjikyu. Another one, Izuna thought with surprise. He watched the space swirl in front of him. Madara's war fan came out of Naruto's dimension. So it is true after all, Izuna sighed and looked up, spotting another blonde man within the crowed room. Naruto caught Izuna's eyes and smirked. Meet Madara's son and my father, Naruto said, pushing Minato forward. Um, nice to meet you, uncle, Minato said awkwardly. You are my brother's son. Izuna asked in disbelief. Minato simply nodded. I don't see it, Izuna stated, making Minato drop his head. It's the hair deer, Kushina patted Minato's back. Tell me, Izuna began. How long has it been? It's a strange sight for me to see several Senju and Uchiha clan members sitting in the same room so, peacefully. Times have changed, Izuna, Hashirama said, making Izuna glare at the Senju. The shinobi world is no longer a battlefield like we knew it. Instead of single clans there are now shinobi villages. Me and Madara brought our clans together and founded the first of many villages. As of now there are five great nations. There is the hidden cloud village in the lighting country, ruled by the Reikage. The hidden sand village in the wind country, ruled by the Kazakage. The hidden mist village in water country, ruled by Mizukage. The hidden rock village in the earth country, ruled by the Tsuchikage. I think you may have heard of him. The current Tsuchikage is Oonoki. Hashirama said and Izuna nodded. He had heard the name of that talented brat before. And finally. The hidden leaf village in the fire country, ruled by the fifth Hokage, Senju Sanade, my daughter, Hashirama said, pointing towards the busty blonde. I seriously doubt Madara and I, I ever agreed to team up with you after everything, Izuna said softly. About the eyes, Naruto trailed off. I suppose you answered enough of my questions, Izuna said thoughtfully. It's simple really. I was dying so I gave them to Madara and I. I. But why give them? We don't get blind from overusing the Manjikyu, Naruto stated making Izuna's eyes twitch in annoyance. I know we don't get blind you fool, Izuna scowled. Madara was injured in the battlefield. He was slowly losing his sight, and the more he pushed his Sharingan and Manjikyu, the more he aggravated his condition. We didn't exactly have access to proper healthcare back then. And I guess you died shortly after giving him your eyes? Naruto wondered and Izuna nodded. So this is Madara's Rinnegan, Naruto said and Izuna's head snapped to the flask on the table. I wonder how Nagato had them in the first place, Naruto muttered out loud. Rinnegan? Are those Madara and I's eyes? Izuna wondered in thought, looking at the two floating eyes balls. We have two accounted Rinnegan users. You and Madara, Tobarama said and Izuna's eyes widened in disbelief. He turned to Blonde and looked at him in both confusion and intrigue. Who do you think is out there with another Rinnegan? Tobarama threw the question into the air. How could I have forgotten? Naruto face palmed while everybody looked at him in confusion. I forgot about Zetsu, Naruto said, remembering the last Akatsuki member. What's so special about Zetsu? From our intel he was the Reckon member of the group and that was about it, Hashirama replied, confused. White Zetsu yes, but the black Zetsu was different. When I talked to all of the Akatsuki I felt his chakra. It was so similar to my and father's chakra that it was scary, Naruto said and let the information hand in the air. Do we have Madara's DNA on store? Naruto asked. You are not bringing back Madara, Tobarama snapped towards the blonde. You fool, do you want a war in your hands? Tobarama roared and everyone looked at him with surprise. Tobarama was always a collected individual. Easy Tobi, Naruto said, hoping to calm his uncle. How about I use the Edo Tensei? 
that gives me control over him. Naruto offered, making Tobarama glare at him even harder. You are a fool. Madara had one of the most powerful chakras I have ever felt. And while yours is slightly more powerful, I doubt even you would be able to bind him to your will, Tobarama said drilly. Relax Tobarama, Hinata began. We don't have his genetic material otherwise the eyes would have found a 50% match towards him, Hinata explained and Tobarama sighed in relief, slumping to the couch. Thank God for that, Tobarama replied. I thought you liked Madara. Naruto asked, confused. As if, Izuna chuckled. I did, Tobarama replied, making Izuna's eyes bulge out. He and Izuna over there were the only Uchihas I respected back then. Then why all the panic? Hinata asked. Because Madara is both stubborn and volatile, not to mention as powerful as Hashirama when he supposedly died. If you get an idea into his head, sheesh, you will never get the end of it, Tobarama said and everyone's sweat dropped. I have to agree on that, Izuna chimed in. Oh, you are still here, Tobarama stated, making everyone's sweat drop. Of course I'm still here, you bastard, Izuna snarled. What are you going to do with him? Hashirama asked. He didn't expect Naruto to resurrect someone purely for answers. I say we kill him and be done with this, Tobarama said, crossing his arms and looking pointedly at Naruto. HN, Izuna grunted. He would embrace death head on. Besides, being dead wasn't so bad, it was rather peaceful. I suppose, Naruto said, his eyes turning into the Rinnegan as he placed a single hand on Izuna's head. Ninjen dash. Wait, Hinata said, stopping Naruto from removing Izuna's soul. Izuna opened his eyes and looked at the soul Hyuga in the room. This is what I talked about back in Kiri. When you can give life with a mere snap of a finger, you tend to lose the notion of life itself, Hinata explained. Could you be any more cryptic, Hashirama groaned. What I'm trying to say is that all life is important, Hinata began softly. It doesn't matter if it came from Naruto Kuen or Kami herself. Every life is important and to be protected, Hinata finished and Naruto sighed, stepping back. You owe your life to my wife. Be thankful she has a kind heart, Naruto said. HN, Izuna grunted. Please, the Uchiha in him had pride. He would never thank an enemy for sparing his life. That still doesn't resolve his fate, Minato said. Just to be clear, Tsunade began sharply. I don't want a rogue Uchiha running rampart in my village. Hmm, Naruto hummed, bringing a hand to his chin. Tell me, Izuna. You still don't think that Hashirama and Madara teamed up for the greater good? Naruto asked and Hinata smiled, knowing where Naruto was taking this. Naruto was giving Izuna something that all Uchihas treasured above all else. Family. Come, Naruto said, releasing Izuna from his binds and motioning him to follow him. Let me show you what Madara and Hashirama built together, Naruto smiled, leading Izuna outside of the compound and into the village that his brother had built. Hashtag hashtag outside of Senju compound, Kanoha hashtag hashtag. Hang on tight, Naruto said, placing a hand on Izuna's shoulder and flashing both of them towards the Hokage mountain. What was that? Izuna groaned, feeling the world dancing around him. IT was that blasted technique from Tobarama, Izuna snarled. Relax, Izuna, Naruto said, calming the Uchiha. You are among family. There are no enemies here, Naruto said. Izuna grumbled at being ordered around by some brat but reluctantly followed. This, Naruto said, stepping to the ledge of the Hokage mountain and gazing into the village. Wow, Izuna breathed out, looking at all the light in the village. This is the Hidden Leaf Village, founded by Senja Hashirama and Uchiha Madara, Naruto said and Izuna just looked in amazement. During the night, Kanoha was truly an amazing sight to behold. Hidden Leaf Village? Izuna asked, confused. Don't blame me or Hashirama for the name. It was Madara that came up with it, Naruto chuckled while Izuna looked at Naruto in disbelief. HN, he grunted. Naruto smiled and placed a hand on his shoulder. Moving on, Naruto said and flashed them both to the streets of Kanoha. Even at nightfall the village was bustling with activity. How many clans live here? Izuna asked, walking down the streets and looking around. Hyuga, Akimichi, Nara, Yamanaka, Aburame, Senju, Inazuka, Kurama and several smaller ones, Naruto explained. No Uchiha clan? Izuna asked confused and saw Naruto flinch. Yes, Naruto began slowly. The Uchiha clan lived here until a few years ago, Naruto said, hoping to not lose Izuna after this. What happened? Izuna asked, 
his voice taking a dangerous tone. Greed, Naruto replied and Izuna stopping walking, looking at him in disbelief. The only Uchiha's alive now are me, Itachi, now, my father and you, Naruto said. What happened? Izuna asked sadly. I killed them, Naruto said bluntly and Izuna's jaw dropped. You did what? Izuna asked coldly. His Sharingan was turned on and glaring at Naruto. The clan leader at the time was a fool with delusions of grandeur. He wanted the world in his pocket. He wanted power, and save for a few people, all of the clan supported him. He even unleashed the Kyubi in this village, killing thousands of innocents just to try and become Hokage. So I took steps and killed them all, Naruto said without remorse. How could you just kill them like that? Izuna snarled, his fists shaking from anger. They were family. You can hate me all you want but it was necessary. They wanted to destroy the very thing Hashirama and Madara built. Even Madara left the village shortly after its creation because he got fed up with his clan, Naruto explained but Izuna showed no intention of calming down. Izuna clenched his fists so hard that the knuckles were becoming white. He looked towards the blonde and lashed out. Naruto saw it coming, he figured Izuna would come at him. Naruto took the punch head on, staggering backwards slightly. Feeling better? Naruto asked, licking the blood from his lips. Izuna scoffed and punched him once more. Go ahead. If it makes you feel better, Naruto said plainly. Izuna went for a third punch but stopped midway and took a step back. I'm good, Izuna said, sighing. Let's go eat something, Naruto said, placing a hand on Izuna's shoulder and leading him away. Izuna looked up and saw his busted lip had already healed. Your lip? How? Izuna asked in disbelief. Let's just say I have an advanced healing factor, Naruto explained. Izuna just looked at him in slight suspicion but if he could bring back the dead, then a healing factor wasn't that surprising. Izuna ended up shrugging his shoulders and tagging along with Naruto in silence. Here we are, Naruto said, stopping in front a small restaurant with several stools. A ramen bar, Izuna curled his lips in disgust. Why did it have to be ramen? Gross stuff. Izuna said and Naruto's eyes widened. Ramen is food of the gods, Naruto said, feeling like Izuna had just insulted a higher deity. Naruto pushed Izuna inside who reluctantly sat on one of the stools. Two bowls of ramen old man, Naruto called out. Tuchi nodded and went to work. A few minutes later both Naruto and Izuna were served with a steaming bowl of hot ramen. Wait! Naruto yelled, stopping Izuna from dipping into his meal. What now? Izuna groaned, almost childlike. First, you inhale this godly scent, Naruto said as he lowered his head and inhaled the steam rising from the bowl. Then we taste the exotic flavor of the godly soup, Naruto said, taking a small sip from the bowl. Izuna's sweat dropped at his behavior but Naruto wasn't finished. And finally, you eat the noodles, relinquishing on the softness and flavor they carry. Only when you have finished these important three steps you may feast on your meal like a hungry bear, Naruto finished and Izuna was looking at him like he was growing a second head. Tuchi was just nodding in acknowledgement. Whatever, Izuna said and picked the bowl, nearly swallowing his meal in an instant. And all Naruto whined, seeing his teachings gone to waste. It wasn't half bad, Izuna said, placing the bowl down. He looked over to see Naruto mopping over his own bowl. Say Tuchi-san, Izuna began, drawing the attention of the ramen chef. Who founded Kanoha? Izuna asked. Really? Naruto thought, nearly face-palming. He's asking Tuchi of all people. Tuchi was taken back from the question. He had been asked a lot of stuff but this was a first. Uh, Tuchi stammered, looking over to Naruto who was eating his ramen like nothing had happened. Senju Hashirama and Uchiha Madara, Tuchi replied, it was basic knowledge after all. Izuna said nothing more and waited for Naruto to finish in silence. Ready to go home? Naruto asked. Your home isn't my home, Izuna said defiantly. It will be. Give it time, Naruto sighed, flashing both Uchiha's to the Senju compound. Hashtag hashtag next day hashtag hashtag. Morning, Hinata-chan, Naruto said, kissing her head as he sat down at the table for breakfast. He yawned and rubbed his eyes, pushing the lack of sleep away. Last night's tour around the village had taken longer than he anticipated. He's gone, Tobarama shouted as he rushed into the kitchen, slamming the doors open. Who's gone? Hinata asked, munching on some toast. Izuna, Naruto answered, eating his cereal peacefully. You knew. 
Toborama seethed. Of course I knew. I'm not naive enough to just drop Azuna into one of the rooms and hope he doesn't kill us in our sleep, Naruto chuckled and looked towards Itachi who didn't seem to like the joke. I let him leave, Naruto said and Toborama sputtered in reply. Why? Toborama in disbelief. Because we want his loyalty, Hinata began just as Naruto opened his mouth to reply. We want him to choose to live with us by his own free will. He was born in a different time than ours and never got to experience this village system like you and Hashirama. Telling him that Kanoha was built by Madara and trapping him here would more harm than good. He needs to choose by himself where he stands in this new world, Hinata explained and Naruto nodded. You took the words from my mouth, Naruto nodded until a thought crossed his mind. That's rather creepy, how you said exactly what I wanted to say. Maybe I should stop feasting on your brains at night, Hinata said thoughtfully, sticking her tongue out. The brains from which head? Naruto whispered huskily into her ear. That's lame, she groaned in reply while Naruto laughed. You are a pervert. No matter how much you deny it, Karama muttered from his mind. So you let him go just like that? Toborama asked, shaking his head disappointment. Naruto and him did agreed in a lot of stuff, but Naruto was had more trust in other people than him. Did you even tag him with the Hiration seal? Toborama asked, hoping for a yes. No, Naruto replied and Toborama hanged his head. He battled you extensively throughout his life. He would recognize that seal in a heartbeat. So you just let him go, just like that? Toborama asked. Yes. You are too trusting. Let's hope it doesn't come back and bite you in the ass, Toborama warned and sat down to eat as well. If my ass hurts you will be the first to know, Naruto replied, making Toborama look dangerously at him. Hashtag hashtag few days later hashtag hashtag. All ready to go. Tsunade asked, looking at both Naruto and Hinata, her chosen bodyguards to the five Kage summit that would take place in the Land of Iron in a few hours. Toborama was also tagging along but for others' reasons, primarily one Mizukich. Leave the cloak, Naruto, Tsunade warned. I don't want the others Kages thinking you are the new ring leader for the Akatsuki, she said. In a way, I am the new leader, Naruto replied. Do you want to be jumped by the other Kages? Tsunade asked in disbelief. It might be fun fighting three or four Kages at once, Naruto pondered while Tsunade just looked at him blankly. I never had the chance to go all out. It's like my eyes are itching for relief, Naruto explained and Tsunade sighed dramatically. Anyways, are you both ready? Naruto asked, placing a hand on her shoulder and the other on Hinata. We are going now. We will see you in a few hours, Naruto said to the rest of the compound as he teleported away, towards Land of Iron with both Tsunade and Hinata. They arrived at their destination in the blink of an eye. It was snowing in the Land of Iron as they walked towards the gates leading inside the small castle where the meeting was to be held. They approached the big, wooden double doors and were greeted by samurais. Welcome Lady Hokage, Mifune said, bowing in respect. Good to see you as well, General Mifune, Tsunade replied back, bowing as well to the leader of the samurai. Lord Toborama. It seems the news were true. It's a pleasure to meet you, Mifune said and Toborama nodded in reply. Lady Hinata, it's good to see as well, Mifune said and Hinata nodded. Mifune turned towards the last element, a particular blonde we all know and love. Naruto, Mifune said with a chuckle. Old man, Naruto smirked back. Naruto, Tsunade shouted, grabbing him by the scruff of his hair and forcing him to bow. Show some respect to your betters. It's fine Lady Tsunade, Mifune replied kindly. We have met almost a year ago during his training trip. And you let him call you old man? Tsunade asked in disbelief. I'm not getting any younger, Mifune laughed heartedly. Besides, we both know that he has respect for us, even if doesn't show it in his words. I guess. Come, Mifune smiled. The others Kages have yet to arrive, Mifune said, leading Tsunade inside. Naruto was about to follow when Hinata tripped. Naruto's lighting reflexes came in handy as he gripped her by the arm and stopped her from hitting the ground. Did you seriously trip? Naruto asked in disbelief. How would a shinobi even trip? Much less a shinobi of Hinata's caliber. I just zoned out for a little, Hinata chuckled weakly, blinking her eyes quickly like they were burning. She felt like she was awakened for days. What's wrong? Naruto asked. The last couple days have been weird. I get these random waves of pain to my forehead. 
Sometimes the pain just lingers around, not that painful, just an annoying drone during the day, Hinata said. Why didn't you say anything? Naruto asked softly. I didn't want you to worry, Hinata mumbled and Naruto smiled. I want to worry. It's my job to take care of you, Naruto said firmly, placing both hands on her shoulders. Let me see, Naruto said, activating his Rinnegan and poking her forehead with two fingers. A soft green glow enveloped his fingers and started sinking into her head, spreading around her forehead seal. What is that? Naruto wondered, feeling that something strange was happening to her body. It can't be. Naruto's eyes widened in disbelief and he jumped backwards from surprise. Hinata opened her eyes when she felt Naruto's hand leaving her forehead. What's wrong, Naruto-kun? Hinata asked, worried by his reaction. Naruto only smiled in reply and approached her. Something amazing is coming to his world, Naruto said, resting his forehead on hers. His Rinnegan staring into her Byakugan. What's coming? Hinata asked with hope. Naruto was happy so it must be something good, right? A.S. Dash. Naruto, Hinata come inside, Tsunade shouted from the entrance, breaking Naruto's explanation. We'll take later, Naruto said and Hinata nodded, walking next to him. She was happy that these erratic waves of pain was nothing to worry about. Hashtag hashtag few hours later, meeting hashtag hashtag. Now that the Mizukage has arrived we can finally be in this meeting. I am Mifune, General of the Samurai in Iron Country and it's my pleasure to host the Five Kage meeting. Please introduce yourselves, Mifune said, folding his hands and resting his elbows on the table. Mei Terumi, Godei Mizukage, Mei said, placing her dark blue hat on the table. A, Yandame Rekage, A said, throwing his yellow hat to the table. Baki, Godame Kazakage, Baki answered, placing down his green hat. Anoki, Sandame Tsuchikage, Anoki replied, placing down his brown hat. Senju Tsunade, Godame Hokage, Tsunade finished, placing down her hat as well. Good, Mifune said with a smile. Acting as mediator for powerful figures as Kages when there is so much history between their villages wasn't easy. Now, I believe that Tsuchikage should begin since he was the one that called this meeting in the first place, Mifune explained, gesturing to the old Kage. Lord Tsuchikage, when you are ready, Mifune said and leaned backwards as a sign for the Anoki to proceed. Anoki nodded silently and sat somewhat straight. He cleared his throat and simply said one word. Akatsuki. What of it? Mei asked, folding her arms across her chest. As you know, the Akatsuki appeared many years ago but only in the last three they became active. And in only three years they have captured nearly all of the bijou, Anoki said and let it hang in the air. Your worries are unwarranted Anoki, A grunted. I believe you heard the news regarding the Jounin exams I hosted in Kumo. A asked and Anoki nodded. I believe the Hokage could explain better, A said, giving a nod towards the blonde Hokage. If you allow it, I'll call Naruto to explain since he was the one on the battlefield, Tsunade asked towards the Kages and Mifune, who all nodded in agreement. Naruto, Tsunade called and Naruto jumped from the overwatch and stood behind Tsunade. Tsunade gave a small nod and Naruto stepped forward slightly. The Akatsuki is finished. During the Jounin exams they launched a full-scale invasion on Kumo. Of the original ten members, only seven were active at the time. Daydara and Sasori attacked the leaf and nearly captured the Nanabai but were defeated in the end. The remaining five members, Tobi, also known as Uchiha Fugaku, Uchiha Clan Head, Kisame, Konan, Zetsu and Pain, also known as Nagato attacked Kumo. I summoned the ten dragons of the leaf and swept the floor with them. By the end of the battle only Konan and Zetsu were left alive. I allowed Konan to live and return to the rain to rule it in peace. We didn't need another Hanzo popping out in that poor village. Zetsu's whereabouts are currently unknown. Naruto explained. Yes, the ten dragons of the leaf. Kanoha sure came out good because of that invasion. Having a few legends resurrected is always nice, Anoki spat, making the Hokage slightly tense. Having an influx of 5s rank shinobi to any village was a large boost in power, and wars had been started for less than that. Although, Toparama seems to be getting a little handsy with the Mizukage, Anoki stated. HN, May replied. That was uncalled for, Lord Suchikage, Mifune warned while Anoki just grunted in reply. If you called this meeting just for this then you are wasting my time, A sighed. The Akatsuki is defeated, true. But, what happened to the bija they caught? Anoki asked, making everyone's eyes widen in sudden enlightenment. 
So that is the reason of this meeting, Naruto said with a smile. You want to know the fate of the bijou? I already know the fate of the bijou, boy, Anoki sneered. I heard the most interesting news about some new pets Kanoha had acquired in the last few days, Anoki said and Kurama snarled inside Naruto's mind at the word pet. It seems we have been lied to, Kages, Anoki said, addressing Mei, A and Baki. It seems Kanoha is in possession of eight bijou. The last one is the Hachibi, still in possession of Kyumo, Anoki said and only Baki seemed surprised at the news. Without their single bijou, the Achibi, Suna had been left alone of the Akatsuki troubles. Where are you going with this Anoki? Mei asked, narrowing her eyes at the aged Kage. It's very simple, my dear, Anoki gave a crooked smile. I want my bijou back, Anoki said in a firm voice. Naruto sighed and looked back towards Tsunade who seemed to be pondering the options. A wrong answer and this was definitely war. Gives us a few moments, Tsunade said, beckoning Naruto to stand close to her. Anoki grunted in acknowledgement and everyone waited a few moments for the whispers between Naruto and Tsunade to end. So, have you come to an answer? Anoki asked, getting impatient. This meeting was already one hour in. Tsunade nodded and Naruto stepped forward. The answer is, no, Naruto said and Anoki jumped from his seat. What? He snarled. Both the Gobi and the Yanbi belong to IWA. I demand them to be returned to us, Anoki said with a harsh tone. The bijou are not yours, old man, Naruto said, making the room gasp. They are mine, and mine only. Tsunade, Anoki started with a dangerous tone. Does this boy speak for you and the leaf? He asked. Yes, Tsunade replied with a little hesitation. I see, Anoki replied, sitting back down and turning towards Naruto. You are walking a dangerous path, boy. Anoki said and Naruto just laughed in reply, making everyone look at him in confusion. It seems old age has gotten to you, Naruto said and Anoki merely sneered in reply. The bijou belong to me, not the leaf. Don't get other ideas in your head. And when the time comes, despite my respect for A and Kumo, I will come for the Hachibi. And in the meantime, if you want a war, then I will give you one inch Naruto said in a cold tone. I don't need a village to support me, I don't need a village to stand behind me. I will personally walk through the front gates of IWA with eight bijou behind me, and lay waste to your village, Naruto said coldly. Tsunade was sitting a bit uncomfortable in her seat. Naruto was coming a bit strong. The other Kages just watched the events unfold and witnessed the start of the fourth great shinobi war. Such arrogance. You are just like him, Anoki sneered. At least your father had some decency. I'm not my father, Naruto replied. No, you are not. At least we agree on that, Anoki grunted. Is that your final answer? Anoki asked and Naruto nodded. Let the world know, who was responsible for this, Anoki said with a tone of finality, making everyone wonder what the old Kage was up to. That Tsuchikage slowly moved out of his seat, hands behind his back as he calmly strolled to the center of the room. Then, to everyone's surprise, he began to levitate above the ground, standing a few feet from ground level. The old Kage closed his eyes and stood there, floating and seemingly meditating in the middle of the room. Have you gone insane in your old age, Anoki? Aside. IWA shall, never bow to Kanoha or its allies, Anoki roared, extending both arms forward, a jutsu leaving his lips with a harsh tone. Jean Tun, Genkai Hakuri no jutsu, dust release, detachment of the primitive world, as the Tsuchikage called his technique, a large transparent cube appeared with a pure white sphere located inside. The sphere suddenly expanded into a cone-shaped structure. Anoki pointed his technique towards Tsunade, Naruto, Mei and A. The technique glowed white and enveloped the three Kages alongside Naruto. Then suddenly imploded, destroying everything inside and around. When the dust cleared, all three Kages and Naruto were gone, along with the table and a chunk of the wall. At least, that was what the Tsuchikage intended to do, but he never counted on Naruto being unpredictable as he was. The moment that Tsuchikage extended his arms for his jutsu, Naruto activated his Sharingan. His eyes started swirling as Anoki's jutsu formed into the white sphere. Then, to Naruto's surprise, his own arms moved almost unconsciously. He could see it. He understood how it worked. Time seemed to slow down as he watched Anoki pouring earth chakra and forming the outer, translucent shell of his jutsu. Then, each arm added the next components, his left arm added a small flame of fire chakra, and his right arm added a burst of wind chakra. The wind chakra enveloped the fire chakra, 
creating a small vortex of fire inside the sphere. As both elements empowered each other, the sphere started glowing almost a pure white. What Naruto didn't know, was that he was performing the exactly same steps as he watched Inoki. Then, a mere fraction before it all began, time seemed to resume. Jinten, both Naruto and Inoki said simultaneously. Genkai Hakuri and Ojutsu, both techniques clashed in the middle of the room. The point of impact glowed white, covering the room in a blinding light. Where Inoki had the experience and skill with his technique, Naruto had his powerful chakra and vast reserves to compensate for that. The room rumbled from the power of both techniques. From the point of impact, a small sphere started forming and growing in size, destroying the ground and quickly increasing in size. The Kages and their bodyguards seemed to snap from their shock and all jumped away to safety. Suddenly, just like it began, the jutsu imploded and the piercing light died down. Everyone was staring at Naruto and Anoki. Even they seemed to be in shock, Anoki for seeing Naruto copy his jutsu, and Naruto himself for being able to copy said jutsu. Anoki a snarled, being the first to break from the shock. He bent down and jumped towards the levitating Anoki, tackling the old man to the floor. Naruto was shaken from his shock, noticing the entire room about to explode in war. He took a deep breath and sent his golden chains to immobilize everyone in the room, most already running through hand seals. Everyone calm the fuck down, Naruto roared, releasing a wave of chakra that made the room shake slightly. Naruto released his chains, leaving them only around Anoki and his bodyguards, Kuratsuchi and Akatsuchi. Good, Naruto said in his normal voice. He rose a single hand and tried the jutsu once again. He was once again shocked to see a small white spark at the tip of his fingers, forming the perfect sphere he had used. Anoki, Mifune said harshly, forgetting all niceties. What is the meaning of this? You dare attack foreign kages on neutral ground? He asked, his voice taking a deeper tone. It would seem that Iwagakure will go to war over the bijou, and not against Kanoha alone, Tsunade explained, looking at the chained kage on the floor. Yes, a drawled. It would seem our alliance agreement got public. What's your take on this Kazakage-sama? May asked towards Baki. You are, after all, allied with Iwagakure are you not? May asked sweetly, making Baki take a step back and gulp in fear. I assure you, Baki tried to reason. I knew nothing of his plans for this meeting. Prove it, Naruto challenged, extending his arm for Baki to take. The Kazakage, however, didn't even hesitate and placed his hand on Naruto's. Ninjendo, human path, Naruto thought taking particular care to keep his eyes closed. He scanned through his memories and found nothing. He's clear, Naruto said and Baki released a breath of relief he didn't know he was holding. What are we going to do with you, Anoki? Tsunade sighed, leaning back on what remained of the wooden desk they had been sitting on. Lord Mifune, a single samurai burst into the room, urgency in his voice. Iwagakure is marching towards us, the samurai explained and everyone looked back to Anoki, who had a crooked smile. How many? Mifune asked quickly. A full battalion of approximately 1,000 men crossed our borders and are taking position around the castle's main entrance as we speak, the samurai explained. We have closed the gates and barricaded the entrance. It would seem Anoki wasn't as insane as we thought, Naruto said. This meeting wasn't about the Akatsuki or the Bijou. They were just an excuse for him to try and get rid of the Kanoha Kirikumo alliance. If no one survived, there would be no reports of what happened here and a small lie would be sufficient, Naruto explained. You pretty sharp, Anoki commended the boy. But, not even all of you can stand against 1000 shinobi, all around Jounin level, Anoki said, pleased with the strength of his forces. Do not worry, this castle was created to withstand heavy siege, Mifune explained. That won't work against IWA shinobi, Tsunade sighed. They are highly skilled in earth ninjutsu and will bring down these walls in minutes. Then I suggest we man the walls, Mifune offered and everyone nodded. And him? A asked, nodding towards Anoki and his bodyguards. I'll bring him along. So he can see what his decisions brought, Naruto said and everyone left the room. Hashtag hashtag with Iwa's battalion hashtag hashtag. Get ready men, Kitsuchi shouted to the shinobi standing behind him. Are you sure about this? Ren asked with doubt. We are going to attack the Kages, she muttered. Are you loyal to IWA or that Naruto fellow? Taisiki asked with a sneer and Ren stayed silent. Just stay back, Taisiki sighed. You are not here to be a frontliner. You are here to sense enemy movement. 
Oh okay, Ren said slowly and sat down, crossing her legs and placing her hands in the ram seal. Begin, Kitsuchi shouted. Dotan, Doryuden, Earth Dragon Bullet. Hashtag hashtag with Kage's hashtag hashtag. This won't hold much, Mei said, frowning at the defenses they had placed. While the gates were metal, their barricade was nothing but a few chunks of wood pressed against the gate. Take cover, one of the samurai on the walls shouted as thousands of rocks and hardened mud rained upon the castle. Everyone inside hugged the walls for cover as the attack smashed against the walls. At first it did nothing, but over time, the continuous impacts of small rock was beginning to crack the walls. Should we answer back? Baki asked, siding with the other Kages. What Anoki had done was foolish and the Suna wouldn't stand against three allied villages. Get back, Hinata shouted, beckoning everyone to stay away from walls. Naruto felt the large chakra spike from the invading forces. The whole castle started rumbling as the walls started simply sinking on the ground, inch by inch. The vast and thick wall that separated the inner castle from the outside was simply sinking into the earth, as if being swallowed by a swamp. Stay here, Naruto said, walking forward. What are you going to do? Tsunade asked quickly. What I do best, Naruto replied and jumped over the sinking walls. Hashtag hashtag with Iwa's battalion hashtag hashtag. Enemy incoming, Ren shouted to the battalion, forcing everyone to halt their jutsu. The moving earth core technique required a lot of chakra and made the user stationary, and thus vulnerable to an attack. Men, forward, Kitsuchi bellowed and the shinobi charged forward, running towards the enemy. No, run away, Ren shouted, but they never heard her. It's Naruto, she whispered, her voice falling on deaf ears. Kanai Kage Bunshin no Jutsu, Kanai Shadow Clone, Naruto said, throwing a single Kanai into the air. The Kanai quickly multiplied into hundreds and started raining down against the IWA army. Dotan, Doryuhiki, Earth Wall, the forward shinobi shouted, raising a wall in front of their army and blocking every single Kanai. The bastard thinks we didn't learn anything from the yellow flash back then, one shinobi sneered. What they didn't expect in a million years was for Naruto to simply appear through the wall like a ghost, speeding towards them at fast speeds. He blinked and Naruto was suddenly upon him, delivering a lightning-empowered punch against his gut. His last image was a pair of glowing red eyes with black markings. Sweitun, Baku Swashuha, Great Exploding Water Wave, Naruto pumped his lungs with chakra and unleashed a gigantic wave over the army. They raised defensive walls but the water was like a tsunami. Not even the earth nature power over the water nature seemed to stop it. Raitun, Raryudan, Lightning Dragon, a blue dragon with piercing yellow eyes sparkled out of Naruto's hands and dove into the wave. Naruto watched as the electrified tsunami washed down and dealt with the frontliners. Kitsuchi snarled, seeing most of the army defeated in the blink of an eye just by a water jutsu. Dotan, Sando no jutsu, Mountain Jutsu, he roared, slamming both hands on the ground. Naruto stopped walking when he felt the earth rumble beneath him. Around him, two enormous rock formations rose from the ground. They started moving towards one another, Naruto still caught in the middle. Let's try this, Naruto wondered, raising his hands forward. Jin Tun, Genkai Hakuri no Jutsu, detachment of the primitive world, the same white sphere he had used before appeared in his hands. The sphere expanded and completely leveled the ground around him, destroying the towering slabs of earth. Not possible, Kitsuchi muttered, seeing his strongest attack neutralized with the Tsuchikich's dust style. Bastard, he snarled, running towards Naruto. Dotan, Kengan no Jutsu, Stone Fist, Kitsuchi charged forward, sending his stone-covered fist crashing against the blonde. Naruto simply raised a hand and blocked the strike with an open palm, much to Kitsuchi's shock. Chidori, Naruto said, unleashing lightning chakra from the same hand he used to defend. The lightning completely destroyed the rock shell and electrocuted Kitsuchi, who fell to his knees, twitching all over. Be bastard, Kitsuchi said, before blacking out. Naruto stepped over Kitsuchi and continued with his onslaught until he reached the last person on the army. Ren, Naruto said, but she stayed silent. She looked up but only caught a glimpse of yellow hair before she saw nothing more. It was done. Hashtag hashtag with Kage's hashtag hashtag. Anoki smiled when he heard his army yell and charge forward. He could feel the ground trembling, this caused by his army running forward. His grin quickly fell out of his face when the scream of charge were replaced with screams of fright. Anoki's eyes widened when he saw his own technique shine in the distance. Then silence. His heart was hammering in his chest as Anoki waited for a sound, anything. 
The silence was leaving a sinking feeling in his gut. Then he saw it, a glimpse of red hair, approaching the castle through the mist of the dust. Naruto walked inside, his face covered with dirt and his hair stained red. He had so much blood on him that his hair seemed red instead of yellow. It's done, Naruto simply said. What have you done? Anoki yelled in despair, fighting against the restraints. What was necessary, Naruto replied with a heavy heart. This is what happen to your village if you continue to pursue your goals. Forget the bijou. They aren't meant to be used as weapons and as long as I live, they will never be again, Naruto explained and Anoki dropped his head. Naruto could see tears running down the man's cheeks. He had just brought a thousand of his men to die. Clap clap clap. Everyone looked towards the origin of the clapping sound. Their eyes widened in shock, fear and disbelief when they saw Achiha Madara sitting on one of the rocks, slowly clapping. Looks like Zetsu wasn't lying about you, Naruto. You do dance rather well, Madara said with amusement. Madara, Tsunade said with astonishment. He's an Edo Tensei, Naruto said, looking at the fracture marks all over his skin. Now, now, Madara began, rising from the stone. That is no way to greet family. How about giving your old man a hug? He asked with amusement. Everyone just stood there gaping like a fish. Here stood, Uchiha fucking Madara, the man that was supposed to dead, cracking a liner. I, huh, I mean, huh, Naruto stammered, scratching his head in confusion. He didn't know how to handle this. Why are you here, Madara? Tsunade snarled. Easy, Senju, Madara replied calmly. I came to offer all of you a choice. Either give me the bijou, Madara said, looking pointedly at Naruto. Or you will have war, Madara warned, his tone getting lower. The bijou are mine, Naruto replied. And not even you will get them. You are the other Rinnegan, aren't you? You were the one that summoned the ghetto Mazo, Naruto stated. His initial suspicions had been confirmed. Guilty as charged, Madara said, raising his arms in defeat. But I do have to thank you, Madara said, getting a confused look from Naruto. You gave me my brother back, Madara smirked. Told you, Toborama grunted. And as a gift in return, I came here to offer all of a choice. You either deliver me the bijou peacefully or I will give you a war. Iwagakure today was only a taste. It's amazing what the power of suggestion can do isn't it, Anoki? Madara asked with amusement. A suggestion here, a suggestion there, couple that with your already existent hate towards the leaf and here you go, bringing an army to kill your enemies, Madara said, making everyone stare at him in shock. Anoki was just looking blankly at the ground. Don't feel so bad, Madara appeased. Naruto was rather mild with them. They are all knocked out you know. They are all alive, Madara explained and Anoki's head snapped up and looked towards Naruto. Naruto noticed Anoki looking at him with pleading eyes, as if asking to confirm what Madara said. It's true. They are only knocked out. The blood on me was only a simple genjutsu, Naruto confirmed and Anoki could sigh in relief. Anyway, he may be mild, but I'm not, Madara smirked and nodded towards the outside of the castle. The night sky was immediately lit ablaze. No, Naruto yelled, flashing towards the battlefield. He saw a clone of Madara do a single hand seal and spew an ocean of fire against the unconscious shinobi lying on the ground. Suetan, Baku Swashuha, great exploding water wave, Naruto did the same jutsu yet again. This time twice as more powerful as before. The gigantic wave swallowed Madara's jutsu, immediately putting out the fire all over and saving the IWA shinobi from being burned up. He watched the clone of Madara smirk and dispel in smoke. Naruto flashed back to the Kages and every single one was on the ground in pain, their bodyguards completely out. What happened? Naruto thought. He had only been gone for a minute at the most. Hinata. Naruto wondered, looking around but didn't spot her. Where's Hinata? Naruto asked, rushing to Tsunade's side. She looked up and groggily extended her arm. Naruto opened his hands and watched as Tsunade dropped something on it. Naruto looked at the item and it was Hinata's wedding ring. I'm sorry and Naruto. We tea tried, Tsunade coughed. No 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 no, Naruto thought, backing away. Madara couldn't have taken her. Hainatea. If you want to support me check out my Patreon at https colon slash slash www.patreon.com slash kaioshin. I tend to polls that decide important plot stuff in my Piatrian. Many thanks to my awesome patrons. Nicholas Berenger. 
Ben Phillips. Yamatancho. Taco TSK. Yuki. Search 1301. If you enjoyed the content, don't forget to give it a like and subscribe to the channel. I'll be here until next time.